Yeah, after about two years, actually, we like I mentioned in the beginning, we could see there was always a percentage that was um, against us because we were speaking French and coming from Quebec. They were, they were the signs like frogs go home. You know, we were just starting. We thought, you know, we're coming in and we're building it. They were putting us over and they see a sign frogs go home and say, I don't, I don't understand why. Uh, kind of understood, but I said with times it'll it'll fade out. <clears throat> It didn't, and with times it got a little worse. In this business, to be um, successful, you have to either be hated or loved. You don't want to be caught in between. And at that point, we were starting to be caught in between, and it wasn't a comfortable place. My brother and I had spoken about it, and we had um, wondered, hmm, maybe we should turn heel. And we laughed about it, because, you know, Rougeau was turning heel. It was something that was never even considered, thought of, or imagined. And we laughed about it, but we said it would probably be a solution. I was trying to imagine, what would it be like working heel? Yeah, I've never worked heel. I did in Japan, 1975, just a little bit, but um, I was like, wow, being a heel. So we came up with the idea, we thought about it. All of a sudden we had a call, uh, Vince wanted us to fly us to Stanford, come and meet with him. We didn't know why, but so we flew to Stanford, we went and sat, and, uh, how you doing, guys? Start talking. You know, and, uh, we had a good rapport with Vince. He says, uh, "How would you guys feel about uh, turning heel?" My brother and I looked at each other and we laughed because we said, "Vince, we talked about this two weeks ago, and we were like, well, now that you come up with this, because yeah, he was aware of the same thing. You know, he's very Vince is a genius about his business, and uh, he could see where it was going, and he could say I could do a lot better business. They'd be a lot more successful. Successful." worldwide as heels than trying to keep his baby face just for Quebec. So um, we st so I started mentioning, I said, wow, this is like, okay, this is starting to get real now. You know, we just toyed with the idea. And uh, we said, how would you see it? What, what, how would we change? You know, and this and that he came, that's where he came up with the ideas of uh, the little American flags. And you go on interviews and like we started to do and say how much we love the United States of America, this and that. Was the Brother Love show the, the first show where you really turned? It's one of the first shows. Yeah, I'd say it's one of them, yeah. We started slowly because he, he said, he said, when do you want to do this? He said, we're going to do it gradually over two, three months. Okay, how do you plan on doing it? That's what he said. You're going to start with the interviews like how much you, you we really love the United States of America and, you know, oh boy, I'm really, you know, milking it and putting it on, laying it on thick. He says... I said, you serious? You're going to say they're going to hate us because we say that we love them. He says, the way you're going to do it, and you keep saying it's like you're trying to cram it down their throat, they're going to say, these guys are full of crap. You know? And I said, okay. I had faith in them. And I said, okay. And he says, we'll have, you'll have two little American flags. I said, yeah, but that's going to get hit. Yeah, because of the size of them. You know, you're coming in with their little flags. He said, they're going to throw those obnoxious, two SOVs, whatever. So... I said, okay. We said, let's go with it. I said, hey, Vince, how about... And he says, well, I want to add something to your name. I said, call us the Vince McMinn. <laughs> so as a joke, as we said, if you, if you give us that name, you're going to have to push us, <laughs> you know. But he laughed and he says, no, he says, we'll call you the fabulous Rougeau Brothers. I'm like, okay. I thought, in the beginning, it's funny, I thought it was kind of soft. The fabulous Rougeau Brothers, little American flags. We love the United States. Wow, they're going to hate us. But he says, trust me. We did it, and within, I'd say, six months, we were the most hated team in the WWF. So he was right. He was right. And even in our matches, even when we came in, the American flags, it's not, he didn't want us working heel. We kept working as baby faces. Once in a while, a little easy way out or something. But then the people get pissed. So we'd have, we'd be working with the Killer Bees a lot, so it'd be baby face matches. But at one point, we just like, you know, they like out wrestle us a bit, and then at one point, whoops, we get to the rope to get out of something. And then, oh, the people were upset. You know, we turned like that slowly and over a couple of months, then, I, then I, we started turning more and more heel, you know, but uh, he says gradually. And at what point in time was the song created that uh, is considered one of the greatest wrestling songs of all time? <laughs> Depends, I guess, who you talk to, but I liked it. Personally, I loved it. It was uh, not long after that, at that point. Also, Vince said... We need, you know, we need to get music for you guys when you come in, you know, and, uh, okay, what song, you know? But at one point, with Jimmy Hart, because we were Jimmy Hart back then, Jimmy Hart, he loves to create. He's, 
and super guy. He's always, he's always thinking and he's always looking out for his team. What could we do better? And what could we, and he says, guys, he says, what if we, we built a song together and, you know, and he said, I could write the music and let me work on something and then we'll put some input. And so that's, it was, uh, like I said, it was the idea that we, we'd make our own say, can you guys sing? Vince said, can you guys sing? Sing, uh, can you hold the note or something? But, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be a Frank Sinatra, but you know, uh, basically, yeah, it comes to some people can sing zero. We could sing maybe 20%. We could do something. He says, it'd be cool, cool if you guys did your own song, you know. So basically that's how it started. And then with Jimmy Hart, we were on the road and we'd be writing lyrics and, you know, he wrote the English parts. And he, he said, you know, it'd be fun. He says, we put some French in it. And in the French size, you're like mocking them and, you know, nagging or digging them. But with a smile, you know. So, and like in English, we don't, we don't dig them at all or anything, but in French, we say, you know, that in the world, they're the worst and, you know, and this and that, but all, we're all American boys. So it's, yeah, it's great. So we, it was, a it was tag work there. There was my brother, Jimmy Hart, myself, and he had Jim McGuire also that was writing uh, the music and playing instruments. That's how it all came together. And then we went to uh, Memphis to do a photo shoot and this and that eventually we were moving to Memphis and um, I never knew why Memphis. But anyways, we went to Memphis. I guess there's a lot of heat with the rest of the country with Memphis. I don't yes, know. Yes, Jimmy Hart's from there. Who knows? There you go. Yeah. So, but it, we went to Sun, Sun Studio Records. That was fun. Actually, we did photos in front of the Memphis Bell on Beale Street and this and that. Sun Studios where uh, there were pictures of Elvis recording in there, Johnny Cash. And the fabulous Rougeau brothers, but it was fun being in those same studios as uh, as those guys. And we recorded it one afternoon, and then we flew back and went to work. And that's that was the history of the song. That's how it came out. Was it your choice to have Jimmy Hart as a manager, or was that Vince McMahon? That's Vince's choice. Um, Vince is the one that said, "I'm going to put Jimmy Hart with you guys." That's, I had no problem with that because I knew how Jimmy was devoted to the people he worked with. Uh, he's reliable, on time, devoted. Uh, after the match, you could stay till one in the morning talking about plans. We could do this, and he'll be there till one in the morning. It's not like, hey guys, uh, tired, I'm going to bed. He loved the business. Mm -hmm.